Hello and welcome back to our channel, or if you're new here, we're Beth and Jake. We live in our self-built tiny home on wheels. Thank you for joining us on this adventure. This week we're in Wales. Spoiler alert, it's spectacular. So hello and welcome back today. We're going to take you through some spots in the Brecon Beacons. And today we are joined by Callum and Tash and Polly, Polly Olivia. Hi. I'm already out of breath. Me too. But today we're going up to see Sydney Fan. Which is spelled L L, but that's pronounced with us apparently in Welsh. So yeah. yeah, so in this video we're basically gonna show you around our favourite place in the Brecon Beacon. So if you wanna find out, keep watching. <laughs> This walk is called Sinni Van Vak, which translates to Little Lake Near the Peak. Legend has it a young man agreed to marry a beautiful girl who arose from the lake, with the condition that he would not hit her three times. He agreed they were married with three children. Sadly, over time the man did hit his wife three times, so she went back to the lake like she promised, taking her ploughing cattle with her. They say to this very day you can see a well-marked furrow from the plough running right across the mountain to the edge of the lake. The lady returned to teach her sons about medicine. They became famous doctors and are still known today for having their medical formula remain in the Welsh manuscripts. This walk is a circular walk. However, today we're only doing a one way and back because unfortunately we came quite late in the day, five o'clock and we arrived at the car park. And as you can see, it's already pretty uh, cloudy. Not the best of weathers, but that's what you do. That's what happens if you try and go hiking in England, Scotland and Wales during the autumn and winter months, you'll be battling the weather. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, this view which we're going to is, well firstly, a view and not covered by mist. And secondly, hopefully it's worth it because it's been one that I've been looking forward to going to for a long, long time. I've had it saved on my Instagram for ages. I'm hoping it's a good one. We ended up all getting soaking wet on the way to the lake, but thankfully the rain did stop for us to be able to have a good look around. The clouds were really low, so we decided not to walk up to the main viewpoint. We were hoping to have the view of the entire lake from above, but the weather had different plans for us. It was still a really enjoyable walk, and we can't wait to come back one day and make it to the top. The views all around were absolutely spectacular. Polly, who is a big fan of wild swimming, was the only one brave enough to go for a swim. If you would like to swim here, make sure you swim in a smaller lake and not the main one. This isn't just because it's the most haunted body of water in Wales, but because of the dangerous machinery there, since it's been made into a dam according to the signposts. So we just walked all the way up to like the lake thing, but it was pouring down with rain, so we stopped there, came back. Um, I will tell you that one of the ways to get to this car park is a really sharp hairpin bend apparently and people were warning us about it but if you come from the direction we did um, which I'm sure Jake will put on the map on the screen hopefully um, then you'll make it fine no problems but the road is really really thin and quite long so if you're not planning on walking um, around then don't bother coming to this car park also there's no camping here there's a signpost so we're gonna head off now um, but yeah it's a good walk I recommend So this morning we woke up beside this beautiful reservoir. Um, we came in the dark last night so we didn't know how nice it actually was going to be. And also we were expecting it to be raining all day today so that's what the weather said but somehow it all came last night instead. Apparently. I was asleep but Beth I didn't have oh, sleep very sleep well did you? Last night the rain was so hard and it was really really windy and the whole ground was shaking. Um, today it's obviously really windy but it's not raining because it's a yeah. So we're going to go see some waterfalls today, I believe, that's the agenda. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wake up here, stunning location. Unfortunately yesterday's one was a bit too rainy, we didn't get to see the photographic spot that I've been dreaming of, but alas, we will go another time, another day. We left Usk Reservoir to make our way to the waterfalls.
if you haven't already guessed from that first waterfall, we are currently doing a waterfall walk, which is called... The Four Falls Walk. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> it is and basically cool. there's four big waterfalls that you see along this walk. I've done it a couple of times before, Jake's done it once before. We loved it so much, we want to come back and film it to show you guys. Um, but yeah, slightly raining today, so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll make it round. I think it's like a three hour round trip. Yes. And the car park we parked in was the further away one, so maybe if you park at the other car park it's closer. Only um, slightly. Slightly, yeah. But that first waterfall, if, if memory serves, was actually the least impressive yeah. of the four and it ends with a waterfall which you can actually walk behind. So yeah. hopefully we can showcase that and let you get excited. Also, on that note, if you ever came here and you left your car keys, there's some car keys on that tree over there. Oh yeah, there's some car keys hung on the tree. So now you know where to find them. <laughs> the Four Fools Walk is one that we definitely recommend. On a wet day, the ground can be fairly slippery, so make sure you come prepared with the right shoes. Most of the waterfalls here have a steep path to get down to them, but overall it's not too much of a difficult walk if you don't mind steep inclines and lots of steps. We've both agreed that it's well worth it. We visited after a huge heavy rainfall, so the waterfalls were even more powerful than I've seen them before. This is like the biggest waterfall and I've been here twice and I've walked under it twice but last night it rained so heavy and it looks pretty difficult to walk under it today because like we're stood really far yeah. away from it and we can feel the spray can't we? Oh yeah we don't want to risk getting the camera wet so I'll get the GoPro Osmo action out see if we can get a little bit closer but I mean it's amazing just to come and see anyway 170 steps down and 170 gonna, back up and it's going to be a challenge going up if you're not fit so uh, if you are able, it's definitely worth it. It's an incredible waterfall. Yeah. Um, but it's just really powerful today, which yeah. is amazing, but not so easy to walk behind. But yeah. see if Jake can do it. So that's the end of that walk and the end of our four, fa four falls trail. Yes. Uh, we're going to do another one tomorrow probably, hopefully. But what do you rate, what do you rate the uh, walk? Good? I like this. I think it's my favourite thing in the Bracken Beacons. Oh yeah. Out of the few things that we've done so far. But Is I that... don't know what we're doing tomorrow. We're going to have to do a little bit of research. And, uh... Yeah, we've got a few options. But we'll let you know obviously because it'll be coming up next however <laughs> that walk was amazing it's so good those waterfalls were all incredible the last one was the most impressive how uh, i would say though because it rained so hard last night there was almost too much water you couldn't actually comfortably go around the back but if you want to have a raincoat or don't mind getting wet yeah then it's fine it's and brilliant. jake's already dry because it's actually a bit sunny now it's yeah such weird weather um, um yeah we need to go back to the van now and have some food because we're starving yeah and then uh, find, a, <laughs> find a spot to sleep and we'll see you tomorrow Today is a very special day. Not that special. Special it's, for one person. It's a very special day for many people, including me. It's Jake's birthday. It is. We've got an exciting few things planned. We've actually made our way down to Cardiff. So we're going to see what we get up to. But first, we need to change. So Let's ready? put our birthday suits on. Let's put our birthday suits on. <laughs> Do you want to grab your clothes? And three, two, one. That was easy. Um. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, so yeah, let's get started with Jake's birthday and see what we get up to and what you can get up to whilst living in a tiny space on a rainy birthday because it's raining today, isn't it? Yes, and I normally make breakfast, but today Beth is going to make it for me. Hang on, we take in we often I often make breakfast. No, I always make it. <laughs> you always clean up. Let's get started. Here we go. So we've just been to Rampwell for my birthday. It was these guys' suggestion, Nick and Sam, and it was amazing. Jake was time. awesome. Yeah, oh man, I'm sweating so much. It so went sweating. down. Did I do the right line? She's stealing your punchline here. 
Bless you. This isn't your vlog. Jake had the best birthday ever. He couldn't stop smiling after a few hours of throwing himself around a skate park. It was definitely a birthday to remember. You might recognise these guys from YouTube as Nick Rooms. Big thank you to Nick and Sam for organising the skating and taking us for a meal afterwards. So after the shower yesterday, we pretty much conked out, exhausted from the skating. Yeah. We had another little meal with Nick and Sam afterwards for the evening. And so a big shout out and a huge thank you again for making my birthday extra special, guys. It was extra special, wasn't it? It was, it was. And now we're just about to leave this car park. But unfortunately, this car park is riddled with litter. So before we go, we're just going to do our service and pick up a few bits and fill up our bag. There's actually a bin here. That's, that's the worst part about it. It's crazy that there's a bin here, but there's so much rubbish. Yeah. Like, so yeah, well, as a thank you to this car park for letting us stay for a few nights, we'll do that. So it took us all of two, three minutes to fill up two of these bags. Yeah, and my bag's down here. And I the shockingly vast majority of it is fast food. Bottles, cans, McDonald's, Tesco's, and whatever. sandwiches. And so people just come for the viewpoint or whatever, or just to hang out and dump their litter. I think it's important to show that it's not van related because people who live in vans have a bin in their van and yeah. we don't buy fast food junk like this when we've got cooking facilities and all that. Yeah. So, if everyone can try doing a bit more litter picking, we can try and make this world a better place and hopefully improve each place that we're at. This place is still full of litter, but we've done a little bit and if everyone does a little bit, then we can all make a lot happen. We finished the week by yeah. going surfing with our friends. Jake was so good at surfing as he's done it a couple of times before and he has really good balance. It was my first time and I can't even explain how much fun I had. We didn't film much of this, but Nick Rome's did, so keep an eye on her channel for that vlog. I'll add a link in the description for that if you're interested. And thank you to all our new friends, most of which we met at the Van Life Meetup, for making the last few weeks so enjoyable. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give this a cheeky thumbs up and click subscribe to see us next week.